What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to download and set up your own Fabric MC 1.20 server. It's super easy. To begin, in the description down below, you'll find a link to fabricmc.net slash use slash installer. I'd highly recommend using this over the download server jar option, which we also have on the website, as you'll need to do a lot of things manually. Using the installer makes life a lot easier. Click download for Windows, otherwise download universal jar if you're on a computer using something other than Windows. Windows, save it and open it when it's done downloading. Simply click the server tab at the very top and make sure you have Minecraft 1.20 selected here. I'll leave everything else as default and we can choose an installation location by clicking the three dots and I'll head to my desktop and make a new folder clicking the new folder button up here, call it 1.20. So I've called it 1.20 fabric and clicked select. Now we can click install and click download server jar. When this completes, we'll click generate as well for our server command here, but I'd recommend changing the amount of dedicated RAM we'll be giving to the server from two gigabytes maximum as an XMX 2G to something a bit more if you have more RAM on your PC. The more RAM you give the server, the better it'll function, especially with mods. Using control shift and escape, we can pull up our task manager, heading to the performance tab, followed by memory, we can see how much available RAM we have on our PC. The key word being available. You can only give the fabric server available RAM. You can't give it RAM that's already used. I have a huge amount of RAM, but let's say you have 16. If you're using six already, you only have 10 left on your computer, meaning you can give the server 10, but you're likely to run out of memory and things will start crashing, possibly including the server. So give it maybe half of the remaining RAM on your PC if you're looking to only host a server here. Otherwise, give it even less if you're looking to play on the same computer that you're hosting the server on as everything needs to share resources. As I have a huge amount of RAM, I can comfortably set this to 16G, for example, 16 gigabytes, and click Generate to create our server launcher. Then click it Done, and you can close the installer here. Opening the brand new 1.20 folder with all of the files inside of it, we have a start.bat file that we can right click and edit with something like Notepad to change how our server works. I see the amount didn't save, I'll change it and save it once more. Awesome. Now, all that we need to do is run start.bat and our server will start, or at least try to start. If you see an error like this, you need to install Java. In the description down below, you'll also find a link to download Java if you're missing it. On the Java download page here, we can download the latest JDK. I'll select Windows and X64 installer here, clicking this link. All we need to do is save it and open it when it's done downloading. Awesome. Close and close our browser. Now we can go ahead and run the server once more using start.bat, and this time our server should start a bit more happily. Though do note it'll say fail to load eula.txt, press any key to continue, and open the brand new eula.txt file with something like notepad. Then make sure to change false to true, save and close using control S to save and close it. Now we can launch it again, but what you need to do is open the brand new mods folder here, and we need to place the fabric API in this folder. You'll find a link to this in the description down below. Simply scroll down and look for 1.20, then click it and click download over here. This will download the latest Fabric API and all we need to do is when it's done downloading, drag it from our downloads folder into the mods folder here. As simple as that. Now when it's done, we can place our other mods in this folder, but I'll leave it as is and launch up the server using start.bat. At the same time, while this is running in the background, I'll go ahead and open up Minecraft, clicking allow if prompted about a firewall. Do note you'll need to allow this through a third party firewall if you have an antivirus or something along the lines installed. And eventually the server will start up. It's ready for connections. Minecraft launcher, play Fabric 1.20. Now we're able to head to the multiplayer tab, accept and proceed, and use direct connection or add a server to add our local server. And I'll type in 127.0.0.1, which is localhost. This is your own computer. When you've added it, you'll see your brand new server where we can open it and join our own server, which is great. From here, you can see whenever we say something, it'll appear in console and we can type in console op space techno my username to give us op on the server. Now we are operator and we can run things like game mode creative, for example. Now we're creative mode. Awesome. But how do other people join our server? Well, that's where things get a little bit more confusing and in depth. If someone wants to connect, 
say right next to you on another computer on the same local network, as in the same router, all you need to do is give them your local PC IP. You can get this by hitting start, typing in CMD to open up a command prompt or terminal on Windows 11, and inside of here type in IP config, one word. Hit enter, then locate the way that you're connected to the internet. For me, it's Ethernet here. You can see 192.168.1.50. This is my local IP address, and what someone sitting next to me connected to the same router will use to connect to my server. So for example, it'll be add a server, 192.168.150, done, and there it is. They can join my server when they're next to me, assuming my Windows firewall allows the server through and antiviruses as well. Now, while you can add firewall rules manually, there's a much easier way. You'll find four commands in the description down below. They are these ones here. Essentially, this will allow port 25565, the port that the server's running on, through to our computer, through TCP and UDP. Copy all of these rules here, right-click, copy, hit start, and open up a PowerShell as administrator. So right-click, run as admin. If you have a terminal instead, you can run this as admin too, but just make sure that you see PowerShell at the very top, otherwise choose PowerShell from the dropdown. We'll copy the commands, right-click to paste them, and click paste anyway. Otherwise, Control V may work as well. If you see any text at the very bottom where you can type, just hit enter a few times, and now Minecraft has been allowed through our firewall. Awesome. Now, if someone sitting next to you connected to the same router was having issues, they should be able to connect to your server just fine. But let's say someone outside of your local network wants to connect. For example, someone over the internet or someone who's more than just one router away. Well, that's where port forwarding comes in. It sounds very scary, but to be honest, it's not. In the description down below, you'll find a link to my in-depth port forwarding guide that I'd highly recommend following. Essentially, when someone connects to your router from outside your local network, it'll say, where do I send traffic for port 25565? Your router will say, your computer, and it'll forward it just like that. They'll connect to your Minecraft server. If there are multiple routers away from you, it'll go from one to the next to the next to your computer, and they'll be connected to your server as usual. It really is that simple. It just sounds scary. Now, when you're done playing on your server, all you need to do is type in save hyphen all and hit enter to save everything in your current world. Then type stop and hit enter to bring your world peacefully to a close. It'll save once more just to make sure. Press any key to continue and now your server is shut down. While your computer is turned off or the server is closed, people won't be able to connect to play with you. Your server needs to be running for you to connect and play on your own server. Anyways, that's about it for this quick guide. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!